Yeah, hello to the captain. This is going to be the tutorial for the pilot whale submarine built for the big man challenge. So let's go ahead and we'll take a quick little tour around the sub. All right, so we'll go ahead by going down the hatch in the top here and we'll close it up behind us here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go in the bridge. Uh, if we look here on the main panel, this is the main systems panel. We have master power bridge systems. If you want to power anything down below, you're going to want to make sure master power is on. That is for all the systems. We also have a backup battery here. That's for emergencies only. But master power does need to be on for some of the systems down below. So we'll go ahead and we'll start down below. So we'll close the door to the bridge. And we'll head on down into the main living area. So starting at the bow here, we have the sleeping quarters. So have some uh, simulated cabinets here. This one here does work. As you can see, we have a fire suit and a cold weather suit. So you can go ahead and open those. And then just click on the button on the back there. Flashlight and oxygen for emergencies. Go over the computer here a little bit later have a bed here. If we look above the bed, we have bed storage. So if you click on that, you'll see the bed slowly rises and we have a bunch of equipment. So fire extinguisher, welding torch, underwater welding torch, bunch of first aid kits, a defib. We have a flashlight radio and binoculars and a spare rope. So go ahead and shut that. Coming out of here, we have a simulated fridge, more cabinetry. We have a stove with some simulated burners here. And we also have an a, uh, oven with some simulated temperature there as you can see that turns the oven on so just a little bit of decoration in here have a seating area here a table simulated sink we have a couch we have uh, two cabinets here one has the scuba gear and one has the diving equipment diving equipment will last longer uh, you cannot go through this way you got to go through if you want to walk around on this side these here are the fluid pumps the manual pumps to refill the air for, into the uh, diving equipment so Go ahead in here, we have a head in the rear, and that's pretty much our living quarters down here. So we'll go ahead and we'll head back up. So when you head up, you wanna to head towards the left here. You're gonna be stepping on the step here. So we'll just go over to the left and we'll close the hatch. We'll go over the airlock a little bit later. So let's go ahead back in the bridge here. Uh, there's a lot to this. As you notice, the seat will automatically slide to give you a better view. So we'll go master power on. Next thing is bridge systems. So again, if you want to just power downstairs, you don't need to have bridge systems on. Bridge systems are just going to be for your running systems. So we'll go ahead and we'll click on bridge systems, then this will light us up here. So below that, this section here is your systems. So if you look on the workshop page, you'll see this highlighted. We have uh, mesh power bridge systems battery. We have voltage. As you can see, we are discharging because the generator is currently not on. Over here, now we have the generator. Turn that on. As you can see, it will turn the generator on. That's going to be RPM, temperature, S watts, fuel uh, port, fuel starboard. Those are in liters. We have storage atmosphere and engine room atmosphere. So the way that the system works is we start with some stored air in tanks. That air goes with us. The This is a diesel electric setup. It is electric drive diesel generation. And so what it does is it releases air into the hull of the ship so that the engine can have air to breathe and we can have air to breathe. So the same system uh, will give us air and will give the uh, engine air. So as you can see here, we have storage atmosphere of 60 atmospheres. Uh, that's how much is in the tanks. So 60 atmospheres would be full. As you can see, as we use it, it will go down. We have engine room atmospheres. As you can see, um, the ship is currently, it allows air to go into the different rooms. So as you can see, this is going to stabilize around one atmosphere. Under here, we have C12 and off. That's color one, color two, and off. So that's for our lights. So as you can see, we have white lights. The same lights are down below. They're all controlled by this panel. If we click it uh, again, we get red lights. If we want to dim either the white or the red lights, as you can see, we can go brighter or we can go dimmer there. One more click and it goes off. Uh, we also have a heater here. The heater is automated so that it will maintain a set temperature. So you just turn that on. If you start getting cold, it will maintain temperature. So you can leave it on. It's not necessarily going to run until the temperature goes low enough. Right here, we have our oxygen in percentage. So we have 21% oxygen. That's about what we need to survive. Once it gets below 20, we can start having some, uh, our characters start to have issues. Uh, CO2 is at 0.04. Uh, if we get low oxygen, we'll have this light flash. If we get high CO2, that light will flash. We have a rudder angle. This will show the angle of our rudder. Over here, we can increase our thrust. 
or we can decrease our thrust, and that is showing our thrust percentage here. We can also do it in our seat with the up-down arrows. If you look at the um, H menu there, you can see up-down is thrust. This is the zero thrust. So, for example, if we want to stop, we just press that, and we'll automatically set our thrust to zero so that we can stop. Uh, we can also do that with tapping the space bar. Going up here, we have water in. This will indicate if the pumps are pumping water into our ballast tanks. Here's our water ballast. We have a total of about 8,641 8, liters uh, ca capability so that we know what to input. Here we have uh, water out. So if we're pumping the water out, this light will go. And this is how much air is in there. So uh, we pump the air out of the ballast system to decrease the pressure. And then that allows it the pumps to work more effectively to pump water in and vice versa. When we want to push the water out, we open a valve that releases the air into the ballast tank and it helps push the water out. Uh, this is our, our speed in knots. That is our heading in degrees. And this is how many meters we have below our keel. This is uh, depth under keel. So how many meters are below our keel? Uh, here in this keypad, we can enter in the uh, quantity of ballast we want. If we look here again, we can put it in a total of 8,641. Uh, if we want to gently rise, we'd want about 5,000 liters of ballast. If we want to gently sink, we want probably about 6,500 liters of ballast. So somewhere in that region. Most of the time, we're going to be on automatic mode. So I'll show you that as well. So we can manually enter in a ballast figure in here. But generally, like I said, we're going to be on automatic mode. So we really don't have to worry about entering in the ballast all that often. Uh, most of the time we will operate on automatic mode. So we're going to go to our depth panel next. This is our set depth, how deep we want to go in the water in meters. This is our current depth. The physics sensor is down at the bottom of the ship, so we'll show a negative value there. Uh, this is set depth. This is going towards the surface. So as you can see, we're already at set to zero. As we want to go down, as you can see, we can set it to whatever we want. So there's 146 meters below the water. Uh, so we can set that. This is the depth hold, so this will activate the hold system. This does multiple things. If there is a zero in the keypad, as in we are not manually controlling the ballast, what it will do is automate the ballast. And so when we set uh, the depth hold on, it will automatically take on water to bring us to neutral buoyancy. So that will help us maintain our depth in the water column. If we were to completely stop, it would automate the ballast, the amount of water that we take on in order to uh, maintain the depth. So if we set 146 meters, it would automate the ballast to maintain 146 meters with water. Next thing we have here is important. This is the terrain following distance. So let's say that you set in 146 meters, but we only have six meters under our keel. So we don't want to have to worry about if the bottom comes up towards us as we're getting shallower in the water that we accidentally hit something. So by putting in this system, what we can do is we want to enter in a terrain following distance. So say, for example, we want to put in, let's put in like 15 meters. So this will maintain 15 meters above the bottom of the ocean. So we set that in right there. It doesn't have to be perfect, but there's 14 meters. So what will happen is if we set in 146 meter depth, but let's say the depth of the ocean currently is only 50 meters. Well, what it will do is the submarine will automatically go down as low as it can go until it reaches 14 meters from the bottom. Once it reaches 14 meters from the bottom, it will level out and it will maintain 14 meters from the bottom. So let's say that the seafloor is slowly sloping down. We're at 50 meters, but in 10 minutes we'll be at 150 meters. Well, what it's going to do is we will follow the terrain. We will continually descend into the water column until we reach this depth. Once we reach this depth, it will automatically switch back to this mode. Let's say we're at 200 meters depth, total depth now. It will level off at 146. It will automatically take itself off terrain following. This protects you from hitting the bottom. Uh, let's say you're coming up from 200 uh, meters and the bottom is coming up and we eventually get to the point where 146 meters is the depth of the ocean. Well, once it gets to a point where we're 14 meters away from the ocean bottom again, it will automatically go back into terrain falling mode. So that helps you uh, uh, to make sure you're not hitting things. All right, next thing we have the autopilot master. We have the heading hold. This will uh, allow us to hold a heading that we enter into this keypad. The other one is GPS nav. So if you go ahead and you enter in a coordinate, so let's say we go ahead and we put in the coordinate right there, it will now follow that coordinate. So if we were to enter that in the keypad, so click on the keypad, input waypoint there, 
Uh, if we go back, as you can see, it says bearing uh, 078. If you look right ahead of us, uh, we'll actually, we have to enter that in. All right, so that is going to bring us to that point there. So 169, 175 is the heading. As you can see, it would be a little bit off to the right, which it is. Uh, we're 0.2 nautical miles away, and because we're not moving, it's going to take us zero minutes to get there. The flashing light tells us we're, we're within half a nautical mile of the waypoint. So we'll go ahead and go through that autopilot as well. That is the majority of the stuff in here, so let's go ahead and we'll get started. So there's two ways we can uh, thrust. One is with the up-down on the seat. The other is on the dash right here. So we can do either one. Uh, AD is rudder, so that is steering. As you can see, we can overcome the steering here. Dive planes is WS, so on the tail here we have our dive planes, which allows us to dive or ascend in the water column. Uh, and then we have uh, up, down, again, is thrust, and then space is zero thrust. So if we want to stop, we just tap space, and we'll stop. All right, so let's go ahead, and we'll head on out. So I'm just going to go out slowly here. We've uh, kind of hit a little bit, so I'm just going to shut the autopilot off for now. The way this works is uh, how it would work in real life. The autopilot master must be on for any of the modes to work. And so what this is good for is, say, for example, uh, you want to pre-select a mode. So what we'll do is we have that waypoint over there. I'm going to steer, steer manually. That is already set in there. The information is good. If I go ahead and click autopilot master, as you can see, it's going to turn us. So now it's going to turn us directly to the waypoint. So let's go ahead and we'll put a waypoint uh, pretty far out there. Now we'll take a run. So we'll go ahead and we'll set our waypoint there on the map. We'll go ahead and enter in the new waypoint. It's a one-point waypoint. You know, I, I like a system that's a little bit more interactive. You actually have to pilot it. So as you can see, it's going to turn us towards the waypoint. So we'll go ahead and we'll start to thrust up. I'll just use the up and down arrow keys. You can use either one, either up, down on the keyboard, or you can use uh, the thrust there on the dash. This has a top speed of a little over 20 knots above the water on the surface, and it has a maximum speed of about 32 knots underwater. So it's faster underwater. All right, so as you can see, we're up to 20. Now, if you notice, every once in a while, we'll get a little water in here, and you'll notice we're getting some ballast, even though you didn't put in any ballast. The reason is simple. Uh, part of our ballast system is the fuel. So as we burn fuel, it will automatically put some water in the ballast tanks so that we always stay balanced. All right, as you can see, it's replacing that fuel weight with water weight. So that's uh, pretty much an automated system there. All right, so we're currently following the uh, coordinates here, as you can see, it's a bearing of 089. Uh, it's uh, 3.9 nautical miles away, and we'll be there in 11.8 minutes at this current speed. All right, if we look, we have 24 meters under our keel, so we've set to 146 meter depth. We have a terrain falling distance of 14. This protects us from hitting the bottom. If you put a zero in there, it will let you hit the bottom. So, for example, if you want to actually stop the craft and let it slowly go down and sit on the bottom, you'd want to make sure your train falling distance is zero. All right, let's go ahead. We're going to press depth hold. And here we go. You notice it's automatically filling the ballast. And with the dive planes, it will automatically pitch us to go down. So we don't need to completely fill our ballast to neutral buoyancy to be able to dive. We can dive with no ballast in there, but it will take on water to get us there. As you notice, uh, our uh, depth under keel, 14. As you notice, it will follow the terrain. It's a little bit, it uh, over pitches, and the reason is if you were to come up to a mountain, which has happened to me a couple times, uh, the system needs to be quick so that it can quickly react to the rising terrain. So if you were to accidentally come up on a, a hill or a mountain underwater, it will be able to steer over it and not hit it. So. All right, so as you can see, we're still falling the waypoint. We're up to 30 knots now underwater. We are faster underwater. All right, so one thing I didn't talk about is the snorkel. So as you can see here, we have a snorkel, and I talked about the power generation system. It uses stored air in tanks to feed the engine. That also is how we get air for our breathing in the sub. Now, as you can see, it has a snorkel on the back. When we go above the water, that will automatically extend the snorkel and it will refresh the air in our tank. We have more than enough air for both breathing and for the engine to breathe. We will run out of fuel before we ever have any problem with the engine using up all the air. We have plenty of air in here. So uh, as you notice, if we look at our depth here, our current depth is 110 meters. So now watch what happens, right? We've been following the train. We're still following the train. As you can see, we're still 14 meters above the train. 
watch what happens when we get to our set depth of 146. It's automatically going to level off at 146 because we're no longer uh, in jeopardy of hitting the terrain. So here we come up on 146. It's going to uh, automatically capture that. There we go, it's captured it. Now it has changed its mode automatically to maintain the depth. So we've set 146, we're at 146. As you notice, we are 30 meters below us now. So as you can see, because we have enough depth, we can actually go all the way down there. If the sea is to, if the floor of the sea is to rise up at us again, once we get within 14.6 meters from the bottom of the ocean, it will automatically switch back to terrain falling mode. So pretty simple there. Looking at some of our gauges here, as you can see, our battery is slowly going down. That's intended. As you can see, we're going about uh, two decimal places down on battery. Now, you can easily make it so that you're always producing enough battery. For example, I'm just going to tap the down arrow on the keyboard. And you'll notice I can gently slow us down, and now we have a positive number. When the voltmeter reads positive, we are charging the battery. So, if and if you look, we just lost about one knot of speed, maybe a knot and a half. So that's intended, so you have to actually be the pilot of this craft. If you want to make sure you're not losing battery, you can do that. Uh, but we can pretty much run at max thrust for a very long time, and our battery will not go down appreciably. We also have an emergency backup battery, so in the event that, for example, we run our battery very, very low, we need a little bit of electricity to do something like surface, and so that would allow us to click this on, and that will give us a spare battery, just enough battery power to perhaps start our engine if our engine had shut off or to uh, surface if we must. All right, so let's go ahead and look. Uh, we are currently at a depth of 102. So why are we at a lower depth? We'll look at our depth under keel. As you can see, the seafloor has started to get shallower. The seafloor is coming up. The ocean is getting shallower. We can no longer maintain 146 meters underwater. So the system has automatically switched us over back to terrain following mode. So it's automated. We don't have to worry about hitting stuff. And what this is nice for is, for example, I can get out of my seat. And we'll go ahead and go in the back here. As you can see, the seat automatically slides forward again to help us get out. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go downstairs, and I'll show you that computer that I talked about. So it's a little bit gimmicky, but it's kind of fun. Is you can come down here into the bedroom, and you can sit here at the computer. When you sit down in the chair, you'll notice a camera comes on. The camera is at the front of the submarine there. So this allows when you're down below, if you want to actually look out the front, you can. Now, there are a couple modes on this. If you click on your large keypad, the first one is the field of view. So if I go 0.75, as you can see, it zooms this way in. There's a maximum of one here. So we could go to a maximum of one. We could go to a minimum of negative one, as you can see. Uh, the second number here, as long as it's anything greater than zero, will give us our night vision camera. So we can press on that. And there's our night vision camera, as you can see. And all we have to do is jump out of the seat, and that will go away. All right, so let's go back. This here is for uh, ventilation. That will probably get moved at some point. That was kind of a last-minute thing I needed for the challenge. Head is just all decoration here. That's also for uh, ventilation. This here is for ventilating this room. That ventilates the upper deck. And then here, this ventilates this room. So all these rooms are ventilated uh, to maintain a proper amount of oxygen. All right, so next thing we're going to do here is we'll come into the airlock, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to stop. All right, so I'm just going to press the space bar. That commands us to stop. All right, the generator is automated. It automatically goes up and down. As you can see, it's 100 degrees. It will never overheat. The system is, uh, works really well. So as you can see, it has brought our battery up to 99.9%. .9%. It is still going up. It will automatically control how fast the engine is turning to produce enough electricity for us. So that's all automated. All right, if we look here, we are uh, pretty close to the bottom. We are uh, 23 meters away from the bottom. So let's go ahead. And if you notice, it has 5,806 liters of water automated in our tank. It will try to maintain this depth. All right, so you can run this in automated mode. If you have the depth hold on like we do, it will automatically go down to the depth that you set. Or we can shut that off and we can go manual. So let's go ahead and go manual. Let's go to 6,500 liters here. So we just need a little bit of uh, extra water in here to sink. Let's go ahead and put that in. So as you can see, it is uh, trying to fulfill the number. So we're now out of automatic mode and we're going into manual mode. So in manual mode here, as you can see, I set 6,500 liters of water that I want in there. We have a total 
uh, that we can put in there of 8,641, which is more than we need. Uh, we're going to go ahead here, and we're going to go negatively buoyant. Negative buoyancy means that we're going to sink. Uh, neutral buoyancy means we neither sink nor um, rise, and then um, positive buoyancy means we rise naturally. And so, as you can see here, we're now heavier than we are buoyant, and we will start to go down. It will sink us down to the bottom. All right, so the next thing we're going to do here is I'm just going to gently let this sink, and I will go in here into the airlock. So we're going to get ready here. We're going to actually go outside. And so we're going to go in the airlock system here. So we'll go ahead and we'll shut the door. All right. Next thing here is I want to go downstairs and I want to get my diving suit. So we'll grab the diving suit and we'll head back on up. All right. We'll close this hatch. And now all of our hatches are closed. Let's look at this panel here. So if we look at our panel, we have air level and then we have the air in liters. We have water level, the water in liters. We have fill airlock. We have empty airlock. This will show us if it's filling. This will show us if it's emptying. These are our locks for our doors. So right now, there's no water in here, as you can see. So this door is unlocked. There is no water in here, so this door is unlocked. This door here, because there is water above us, is locked. So we cannot open that no matter what. This is locked. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we'll fill the system. So we'll fill the airlock. As you can see, it now has locked the bridge door because we have water in here. It's locked the exterior door because the pressure differential is too much. And it has also locked the cabin. So that is this one right here, the cabin door. It is filling us with water, as you can see. And it is sucking the air out. So this is, this does take a little bit of time. So I'm going to kind of time lapse it out here. Um, it takes a lot of time to pump all this water and air in and out. Um, sometimes it takes about eight minutes. Depends on the pressure outside. Uh, we'll either increase or decrease it. You have a ladder here. If you want, you can grab this and hold on so you're not floating up against the top. Just be careful. Sometimes it will try to glitch you through that bottom door, but you can just hold on to the ladder here. And I will check back in with you guys once we are filled. All right, looking at a couple more dials here. As you can see, we have the light on for filling. We also have a light for call that's called equalize. Now, what's going to happen is you need to equalize from the exterior pressure of outside and the interior pressure. Uh, if you get over, I think it's about 20 um, atmospheres, you, your character will start to get hurt. And so this system will automatically equalize when the pressure differential gets too high. Uh, they did make some uh, changes in the game where, for example, uh, you're able to pressurize liquids. You really can't do that IRL, uh, but you can pressurize the liquids in game. So uh, sometimes you'll get pressurization from that that can hurt your character. So it will automatically equalize. That's an automated system. Again, if that green light comes on, it means it's equalized. It needs to equalize. Um, if it does not equalize, you'll have issues where, for example, if the pressure is too much inside the uh, airlock, when you open the hatch, it will cause it so that you go flying out and you can't get back in. So the equalization system is automated. You don't have to worry about that. Um, as you can see here, we are almost out of air. We're down to 0.1 air. As you can see here, we're still pumping in. The reason why we have a positive pressure in here, as you can see, it just stopped. As you can see, the positive pressure in here was... Um, due to the pump going once the pump has stopped as you can see the pump has stopped you can now exit so we'll go ahead and open the hatch and we exit so now you're in your uh, suit here let's go ahead and i'll turn on player damage add that off and it will show you how much air you're using so this allows you to do for example um there are treasure boxes under the ocean that you're going to be able to go and loot that is one of the things you could do with this airlock system uh, another thing is repairs. There are a lot of repairs that might need to be done. Cable repairs. You might need to uh, repair an underwater base. Uh, there are also missions where, for example, you might have a sunken boat or airplane you need to connect a cable to. So for that, as you notice, we have a cable on the front, uh, rope anchor on the front. That allows us to tow the submarine. We also have one on the stern here. That allows us, for example, we can drag a cable down and then attach it to uh, something that we want to bring back up. So... Let's look at some other exterior things. See, now we have a nice view of the exterior. We have right here a uh, fluid hose anchor. This allows us to put fuel in the vehicle. All right, and so let's go ahead and go back inside, and we will empty the airlock. So we'll head inside. We'll close the hatch. Hatch is closed. We can go ahead and we can grab the ladder for stability, and we'll go ahead and we will empty the airlock. What you'll notice is this uses a valve system, so the air is highly pressurized in tanks. It stores every bit of air that you use. And so all the air from in the airlock is going to be put into storage tanks. You're not going to lose it. 
And so that allows us to immediately push it all back in here. That air pressure is going to help push the water out. So as you notice, we have some locks. The bridge is locked and the cabinet is still locked. We could still do this because we have a pressure, uh, no pressure differential between the outside. So let's go ahead and empty the airlock. As you can see, we're full of water. This uh, dial here shows us that we're full of water. We're empty of air. So let's go ahead and we'll empty the airlock. You'll notice we're emptying. Air, air is starting to come back in there. You can notice it is emptying. If it goes solid, that means it's done. If it's flashing, it means it's um, currently in transition. You notice the water is coming out. The air is being pressurized in. All right. And we now have a uh, bridge is locked, the exterior is locked, and the cabinet is locked again because there's a pressure differential between in, inside the airlock and outside. You can't accidentally open a door and lose air, for example. This protects you from losing a bunch of your air by um, prematurely you know, opening the airlock. So I'll check back in with you guys when we're almost uh, empty. All right, as you can see, the airlock is about half empty now. If you want to take your suit off, you could. There's plenty of breathable air in here. Uh, if you want to do a little bit of a trick here, you can always do page up. You can see that we have 1.3 atmospheres in here. Uh, if you look there, the gap gas meter also reads all the uh, constituent elements that we have in here. If you want to take your suit off, you can. As you can see, we use a little bit of air. We're still using air because we're wearing a suit. If you wanted to go and take the suit off, it conveniently just floats in the water there. That way you can save that. We've used up about 20% of our air so far. So for example, if you had a really long dive, you don't have to worry about keeping the suit on the whole time you're in the airlock. You can actually take it off and that will extend the amount of time you could be outside in the water. So uh, that's something you can do. As you can see here, water's going pretty quickly. We're about 12 liters per second. So it takes a little bit of time, have some patience. It will uh, empty out, you know, it's, um, it's trying to fight the water pressure outside, which isn't too high at this point. But uh, this is a pretty efficient system. Works really well. We don't lose any air. So I'll check back in with you guys when we're empty. All right, here we are with the fa last uh, five liters of water here. So this system is designed to not waste anything. So uh, it doesn't waste any air. It does take a little bit of time, but that's so that we uh, never waste any air. The air is always recovered into the system. So as you can see here, we uh, once we get below one liter, all the doors unlock. If a little bit of water spills, it's not the end of the world. We can just leave the hatches open. It will automatically recover the water. But uh, as you can see, now that we're uh, we're low on water, as you can see, the bridge and the cabin are now unlocked. So we can go ahead and do that. Uh, we can move around here. So let's go ahead and we'll grab the suit and we'll go ahead and go down. Just leave that hatch open. If we stick our suit in the suit locker here, as you can see, we have 79% air. We can use this pump here. It will pump the air from in the ship into the uh, diving equipment here. So we can refill our diving equipment with this pump here. We also have an identical pump on the other side that is for filling our uh, other suit. So this one, the diving equipment has, uh, has uh, more time on it, and this one has uh, less time on it. So you'd want to use a scuba suit. For example, let's say we're at the surface. You can put the scuba suit on to swim around, and then the diving suit's better for... Uh, for uh, when you're way underwater. So let's go ahead back up here. As you can see, our water is now at zero. It recovered all that water and spit it out, and we can go back into the bridge. So if we want to go ahead and let's say we want an emergency surface here, as you can see, the seat's going automatically back. All we have to do here is go on the keypad, and we'll enter in a zero. As you can see, it's going to fill the ballast tank with air. That's going to pressurize the ballast tank. That's going to help get the water out. As we become lighter and lighter, we're going to go ahead and we'll start to raise up. So as you can see there, we are now light enough that we are um, positively buoyant. This is going to allow us to raise up. Now, we could use the motors to push us up. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to let it passively raise us via buoyancy. This system will work all in buoyancy. But you could start the, uh, start the thrust up, and you can, even with full ballast tanks, you have enough power in your engines that you can actually uh, push yourself back up to the surface. But in an emergency, you would be able to just put a zero in the ballast system and rise up to the surface to um, save yourself. And so, for example, uh, let's watch the snorkel when that comes up. So if, say, for example, we run out of electricity, we need to get up to the surface, or we're out of fuel, uh, we can still surface even if we run out of fuel. So this could be, let's say, worst case scenario, we run out of fuel, we're low on electricity. If we were really low on electricity, we'd want to turn on an emergency battery and then blow our tanks. That will give us enough battery. All it does is open a valve and the pumps turn on. So that is enough to get us up to the surface. As you can see, so we're quickly raising up here. 
And uh, once we get to the surface, I'll show you the snorkel, and I think that will be about it. So here we go. We're going to be surfacing here. As soon as we break the water, it's automatically going to extend the snorkel and refill the air tanks. So that is all automated, so you don't have to worry about that. That The air in the air tanks, again, is for both the engine and for our living compartment. So once we hit the surface here, you'll notice we get the um, snorkel coming up. As you can see, we're sitting just a little bit low, and that's because we uh, currently still have water in our ballast tank. There goes the snorkel. As you can see, snorkel sticks up above the water, and this will allow us to refill our tanks, as you can see. So we still have 59 atmospheres in our tanks. It's still keeping all our systems at one atmosphere. And you see, we still have some water ballast in that. That's why we're not uh, sitting as high. We will once we uh, get rid of all that water ballast. So, hope you guys found this helpful to learn how to use the pilot whale, and I'll see you in the next one.